Um, we usually speak to her a bit earlier on a Tuesday, but it is still Tuesday, so we still talk tech. Nazreen Ibrahim, CEO of NAS Consulting International, tech communicator, talks all things tech on a Tuesday. Nazreen, thanks so much for joining us. I'm getting such a good detox from my social media over the last few days, if not weeks, particularly my Twitter account. I'm reading more, spending more time with my family. I'm going for walks, not because I've managed to somehow claw myself away from my Twitter account, but simply because Twitter isn't working anymore. It's falling apart. Things aren't refreshing. Links not working. My rate limit has been exceeded, which means I can't actually see tweets. Elon Musk is doing a great job of detoxing me from my from my social media addiction. What's happening? What is happening indeed? It's so good to talk to you, Lester. Welcome back. It's wonderful to talk to you. And this talking is, I suppose, what everybody is doing now around Twitter. Now, once I read this news about uh, Musk's sudden um, limitation on how many tweets people can see, uh, unverified accounts will only be able to see 600 posts per day. And for new unverified accounts, we should actually get someone with a voiceover. Like, you know, those movies, they do the trailers for the Hollywood movies to read this part. <laughs> and for new unverified accounts, just 300 in a day. Wow. This guy, you know, the Indian auntie is starting to come out at me when I'm like, I'm up to everything. I am done now. What, what? I, I can't anymore. Well, the argument that Elon Musk has put forward on why Twitter isn't working so good and why they're limiting the number of tweets that one sees in the day is something called data scraping, arguing that um, AI bots and that um, AI software is scraping the site and using the conversations that, that real people are having and using that in the AI language models, essentially giving a... AI language model a little bit of a boost in developing its its model, but for free. And he says he doesn't like that. And in, in, indeed, he doesn't like many things. One of those things is that he uh, haphazardly fired half of the staff, having to rehire back some engineers, um, and and then trying to understand what their commercial model is looking like. Now, if he is blocking anyone. He says he's blocking access to anyone who isn't logged in. Of course, as you correctly um, and thoroughly explained, is the scraping of data. Which company is not doing that and facing consequence in some region or the other? I don't know. I mean, Italy had had banned ChatGPT for that particular reason uh, initially when it was introduced. And the race to become an AI superpower is maddening at this point. It's all that we're seeing around us from, we talked about Hey Pie on the show last week which is an offering from Inflection AI. Uh, and there are many, many organizations introducing large language models, uh, particularly from the Silicon Valley Bay Area experience. I think it was, um, if I saw uh, correctly, Databricks, who paid $1.3 billion for an AI um, a company earlier this week. Uh, Inflection AI further, uh, the, the, the guys who released HeyPi, uh, led by, co-founded by, um, Mustafa Suleiman, who is the former co-founder of Deep, Google's DeepMind, managed to raise $1.3 billion, the same amount, to further build out the large language model. So the, the, the development and the, the pace at which these companies are building these things is um, astronomical. It's just phenomenal, phenomenal to think about in one's mind. Remember also that Inflection AI is building uh, or has an investment from NVIDIA because they have access to NVIDIA's chip, which I don't remember the name of right now, but it allows them mass compute, which is which is what they need. They need that level of computing in order to build these large language models effectively for them to process data. Now, Musk's um, challenge or his, his alleged remark that someone or companies are scraping data, what is he going to do about it? Secondly, isn't he acting counterintuitively to the fact that if he limits people mm. looking at stuff, how is he going to sell ad space? Mm. He tried to come around this topic by hiring Linda Yaccarino as a new CEO. I mean, she's a former ad exec from NBC Universal. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my mind spins at the way the rockets get into space mm. from Starlink and spin around. Mm. And I'm not sure where we're going to see Musk going with this. Only he can tell us in his next mm. untimed, timely tweet 
what his plans for the company are. Uh, Nazreen, finally, are, are we seeing the, the 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 beginning of the end of a life cycle of a social media account, uh, a social media product company, being around with what fourteen, fifteen years? And yes, there have been companies that have gone bust, like. Um, I just escaped my mind. Uh, uh, MySpace, for example. But we've seen people spend essentially their entire lives. I've been on Twitter since 2009. I, it's become very Ooh. much a staple in my um, news gathering, in my communication, in my setting up of plans, my communication with people, making friends, and even in the course of, of my profession and my job. But are we seeing in real time the end of the life cycle of a social media product tool which has become so omnipresent that we can't mention any product without saying and also catch us on our social media accounts like Twitter for example. Mm. Is this the end of Twitter? It's a great question and one as an observer on the landscape and as a player in the, in the space uh, helping brands to understand or navigate their way and also navigating my own personal profile in how I speak and communicate and interact with people on the platform. Having celebrated 14 years uh, a few days ago on being, uh, being on Twitter, I feel so thrilled at that anniversary. Such a long-term relationship. But you are correct in um, understanding that we perhaps are seeing a life cycle of this feels almost um, super supernatural in a way. It's not a, a human sense or a natural sense of state in terms of being, but it's it's an evolving or a devolving of this beast that is now in the hands of one person who can make uh, a massive change of what users can or can't do. And it's not the users anymore, sadly. It's not the users anymore. And it had been the users before, but it's not anymore. So it may stay on by uh, hanging on by a thread, or it could be become something completely different, which only includes a few elite, um, which perhaps we must may be heading. Who knows? We'll see. Nazreen Ibrahim, a pleasure talking to you as always. She is back in a couple of weeks uh, with uh, Tech on a Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us.